Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us, we have the legendary Sony ICF SW7600 GR. It's an AM, FM stereo, long wave, short wave, single sideband portable radio. I bought this used off eBay for a total of 85 bucks shipped. Yes, I got it for 85 bucks, like new, really happy. Um, I bought it from a seller who had a feedback of two, so I took a bit of a gamble. You guys know that sometimes people with lower feedback tend not to deliver. This person did. I was very happy. So let's go ahead and go over dimensions. This radio we have seven and one quarter inches across, four and five eighths of an inch tall. And we have a case depth of one and three eighths of an inch. And for size comparison, we'll just bring this up. Get some radios into frame. I brought a couple to the table here. We have the Kato KA1103. A lot of you guys have one of those. Give you an idea for size comparison. We also have the legendary Texan PL660. It's been around forever. There you go. They're about the same size. All right. And then I think, last but not least, we have Iron Man come to the party. Yeah. Lower this back down. So Iron Man pretty much fits where that speaker grill is. So it gives you an idea for size, what the deck of cards looks like with that. So, all right. Okay, so yeah, this radio is pretty cool. I was really excited. It came with a few little extras. Um, the extras were a case. Let me just put that aside. I got this cool little leatherette style case, Sony World Band receiver. I think that was the original case that came with it. Pretty happy to get that. Um, bonus. Also, I didn't get a box or anything, but I had to get this book, the Sony Wave Handbook, Shortwave Stations of the World. It's outdated, um, but it's cool. It's got a little world map on the back with the time zone. But everything printed inside is pretty much old schedules from the different countries. But neat piece of history, regardless. There's that. Also, uh, it did not come with a user manual, but you're able to download them. So I'll, if I can find the link, I'll put the link in the description details. Um, I was able to print mine. Um, my printer does double-sided printing, which is great. And I made a little mini uh, manual for my radio, which is awesome. And I just printed up on my laser printer. Let me just see here. It shows how to use the clock. I mean, it's really easy to uh, read this manual and understand what they're saying. If you didn't have this manual, you'd have a difficult time with the radio. There's a few button combinations I could not figure out. I needed the manual to figure it out. So but here's the uh, stations, uh, sorry, frequency ranges here. We have long wave, medium wave. You can see there's 9K, 10K stepping. Um, there's the AM short wave. It's split into 14 broadcast bands. And of course, you can uh, tune it con uh, continuously. Here you got 1.6 to 29.9 megahertz. Then FM is 76 to 108. There you go. So you get an idea. Yeah, really cool manual. Really easy to understand. How to set the alarms, how to do the presets. Um, it just has a unique way of doing things. We'll try to touch on most of that. So, all right. So that's the manual. I might refer to this during the video. Keep it off to the side. Let's bring the radio back out. Let's go over features of this radio. Let's go to the left-hand side. We have a carry strap. We have a bunch of things to go over. We have an AM external antenna port. They say they use this for active antennas only, uh, six volt output on this wire. So I'm kind of reluctant of sticking just a uh, standard real antenna wire to this. Anybody have this radio and done that and had no problems, let me know. I'm not sure if I should worry about that six volt output or not going to a, a standard wire. Let me know. Um, they show in the manual clipping your wire to the antenna mast. That's probably what I'm gonna do. Here we have an attenu attenuator for the antenna. Uh, really nice to cut back on the uh, noise uh, so you can reduce the gain, uh, which is really handy when it's really noisy conditions. A line out feature, really good. I've used it with my transmitter, FM transmitter 2. I was able to broadcast a shortwave station on my FM radios around the house. That was excellent. We have a headphone jack. FM stereo sounds fantastic on this. No noise floor. You turn the volume all the way down. You don't hear any hiss. Beautiful. I expect that from Sony. They did a great job. Um, great headphone experience. Here we have a DC in of 6 volts. I do not have the AC adapter, but I could probably uh, get one that will work with this. It shows you the polarity right there. Uh, pretty simple. He did include a 
uh, DC, uh, a Sony branded one uh, for the car uh, with a bunch of different tips and stuff. So I could use that. It's kind of like a universal one. All right, front of the radio, we have Sony, kind of like a raised embossed thing. I like that. Really shiny, sweet. With a metal speaker grill behind her, about a three inch speaker. We have a light button. Actually, it's a really dim green light. Yeah, it's pretty hard to look at, but uh, it's there if you need it in the dark. Here we got some printing there, the model number. Okay, so AM dual conversion. There's our LCD screen. It's a pretty small window, but it's adequate for me. Um, for those who have a hard time seeing, it might be harder for you to look at this radio. But for me, I have no issues. Uh, 100 memory presets. We have two buttons here, uh, standby memory. This is for setting your uh, alarms to wake up to radio or wake up to buzzer. Uh, down here, more buttons. We have an enter button for entering in the presets and a erase button to erase the presets. They have dual functions, set the local time, set daylight savings. Over here, we have an AM band button, which is very important because I didn't know not know how to navigate through the, the broadcast bands. You have to use that button, and I'll explain how we do that. And then it also functions as your world time button, which I'll show you that too, because world time on this radio is really awesome. I'm glad it's a feature. I really like having that on a shortwave radio. Up here, we have a hold uh, switch, which is really neat, so it locks the radio down. Um, here we have a sleep function, dedicated button, which is neat. I think it's like 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes. Here we have power on off, dedicated. A mirror keypad, very basic. We have a direct button, so when you want to get to frequency, you have to direct first, then your frequency, and then execute. So it's direct, frequency, execute. <laughs> I wish it would just, yeah, it would just go to it when you're done, but that's, you can play the game there. If you notice, this execute button has a secondary function, display. That allows us to uh, see the clock uh, when the radio is playing, and then we can change to our world time also. So that brings up the clock. Here we have an FM AM band select. And then over here we have two buttons. It says memory tune. We have a page button. Uh, this uh, presets, your 100 presets are set up as 10 banks. So you have 10 pages of 10 presets. That's how they do it. It's kind of a bummer, but I have no problem navigating through it. It's kind of cool. Like my Page one is AM stations, my page two is FM stations, my page three is shortwave stations, and I can make the rest shortwave if I wanted to. It's not that difficult. Scan is an interesting button. Um, it scans uh, the frequencies in that page. So it's really handy if you have faint shortwave stations or the time of day is changing, you just want to scan through that page real quick to see if it picks up anything instead of hitting every button. Um, that's kind of handy, especially for shortwave. AM, not so much, or FM, because those stations are always coming in strong, but it's there. And then over here, we have tuning buttons. Um, since there is no tuning knob on this radio, you use these exclusively. Um, this is your seek forward and seek back. And then we have our uh, stepping of uh, short steps forward and back. And this is neat. You can hold these down and do continuous tuning. Uh, and it's not uh, muted. So that's really nice when you do the slow tuning. You can hear it as you go. But when you do the fast tuning or seek tuning, you're not going to um, hear anything. Here we got this is manual tune. You can read all that. All right, so let's get to this side of the radio. There's a lot to this radio. It's cool. I'm enjoying all the little fun stuff on here. So as you notice, we'll go from left to right here. We have a volume control, simple analog, really nice. We have a tone control, music, news. I typically have it on news. Uh, music's a little bit on the high side, tone-wise. Uh, we have an AM mode. We have normal, sync mode, and then single sideband mode. Uh, sync is great. Uh, you can use it in shortwave and AM, uh, your AM broadcast band. Uh, it's great for uh, getting those uh, stations that are fading, kind of pulling them back in, kind of locking them in. And, of course, when you're in that mode, you can pick lower sideband or upper sideband. And, of course, when you're in single sideband mode, you can tune in the ham radio operators and CW with the fine tuning there. Okay. Top of the radio, we have an antenna, which extends out to 36 inches and pivots, of course, 360 degrees. It also lifts up uh, when you pull this up, which I could show you. It has this little, little hinge there, so it clears the case. I always say pull that up first. So there you go. Back, we have a cool clock, just like I showed you in the book. Or clock. <laughs> the hours of where the countries are at. That's pretty nice. So you, when you have your world clock going, you can say, okay, I'm plus six hours. You can see where that's at. Kind of give you an idea what country you're searching. Here we got Sony. And we got, uh, takes four AA batteries. And battery power. Made in Japan. Sweet. Love seeing made in Japan. Um, the battery compartment here. Let's open this up on camera. It's pretty difficult. Hinge door, which is nice. Um, there are uh, portable A's. If you look, polarity, it looks like the positive two on top side goes to the left hand side, and the, the two batteries in the bottom, the positive goes to the right hand side of the radio, looking at it from the back side. So there you go. Hinge door, I like that. 
handy handy okay here we got caution um yeah and then uh, we got serial number and some screws open it up all right cool so let's go ahead and turn on that yeah turn the sucker on we went over the features and we'll kind of cruise through things so we're going to do uh radio waves uh by Todd the uh, fm station Check it out so for an audio test i have a c crane FM transmitter 2, hook up to an MP3 player, transmit at 92.9 megahertz. The radio is tuned to 92.9 to pick it up. And I have my MP3 player with that, like I said, YouTube music that is sanctioned. Royalty free. We'll run this for a few minutes. Frequency, for page you're on, and you're in tune. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have me, sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. <laughs> gives you an idea for the audio if you saw the light was really dim um i did show you the world clock there while we were playing the music uh, if you missed that part you can go back uh while i'm playing the music i was controlling the display going to local time going to world time and then showing you you can navigate the different uh, hours different countries there and it stays on there while you're playing the radio which is great so and it'll just stay on that setting so if you go say plus three hours and you go back to local time and then and you go back to your frequency if you go 
back to your list here, you'll remember that change you made to the UTC, you know, from the UTC, which is really great. So you can still put it back to normal UTC and you can advance it to the country you're listening to. It's just a really handy feature. Go back to zero there, go to local. All right, great. So we're going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about presets. So I said you got 100 presets. It's real simple to use. Um, what you do is you find your favorite station, like say like this station here. Uh, what you do is you hit the enter key, you press and hold this, a little flashing light comes up and you can say, okay, I want it in five. Beeps tells you it's in five. It's on page one. If you want to switch pages, you just hit page. You can hit page three. You can hit page four. And then you can check to see if you have any stations saved there. It'll come up like this if you do not have any stations. So if you want to save the station there, all you do is hit hold down enter, press one. And now it is page four, preset one will be 92.9. Of course, you could have FM, AM, short wave, long wave, you could have it all. So let's go ahead and tune this radio. Let's have some fun. Um, what I'm going to do here is uh, show you the short wave and long wave. Let me, uh, so I was picking up a beacon, which was nice earlier. So we can pick it up downstairs here. Hook up this wire here just to get a little range on this antenna since we're downstairs. Okay, so to get to the uh, long wave, you have to hit AM. This is the tricky part. If you do not have the manual, it was very difficult to figure out. You use this button, AM band. And the trick is, you got to hold it down. <laughs> then you hit these two buttons here to go through the AM band. So we're going to go down to the long wave band right there by holding AM band, hitting this button, or up. And if we do the same thing, go right, right back to AM broadcast, back down to long wave. And then we're going to direct enter a uh, frequency here. Whoops, I was in preset mode. Again, it tells you if you screwed up by saying that. Uh, Hit the direct button. Now it goes blank. You enter in your frequency. We're going to go 388. I think I heard it on. And then we're going to go and execute that. Turn this up. Okay, I'm getting some noise. There we go. It's my transformer was on still. There we go. So it's a little beacon out of an airport. Yay, it's my, it's my long wave transmission right there. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and go to short wave here. So to get to short wave, you hold this down and uh, you go like this to your broadcast bands. Now you could also just enter in the frequency. Once you're on the AM band, you can go right to the frequency you want to be on. So we're here on the low end of the band. You can hold this uh, little button here, continuously go, uh, else, no mute on tuning, which is nice. Just hold this down and turn the volume. So this is a real handy thing. It goes fairly slow, but it's nice when you're trying to tweak in between bands. So we're going to go right to 2500. So pick up anything. So WWVM, 3.5 megahertz. And we're going to go 3300. Now we're going to do this. So you heard something. So you passed it. This is a Canadian time signal. By the way, while we're listening to this beautiful sound, <laughs> the run. Canada, UTC, 23 hours, 39 minutes. Rocking. At the right time. So while we're listening to this beautiful music, like I was saying, uh, runtime on this radio with alkaline batteries is approximately 50 hours on FM and approximately 35 hours on AM, short wave and long wave, to give you an idea. I didn't think that was very good. That's probably why a good AC adapter would be nice here for a long time, you know, listening to this all the time. Otherwise, I'm going to use rechargeables, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll go up to 5,000, and I'll show you some of the broadcast bands, how that works. Execute. Just make out WWVM 5 megahertz. Okay, let's have fun with this. So hold this again, and we'll go to 
up here, and we'll just scan and see if it picks up anything. It did. Oh, it keeps going. It's oh, she stop it. As you can hear, we're getting a lot of noise. Let's see what an attenuator can come in handy. It's not quite in tune there. So I'm going to turn that attenuator off because I don't want to miss anything. Pretty cool. So the time you saw there, really dust, some just going down. Typically lots of stations. Now it just went through that broadcast band. So to get to the next one, pull the band down, go up. Now if you're like, oh, Tadabur, you missed a whole bunch, you can just go back down like this. See if we can pick up anything. I think there's some CW there. I'll turn on single sideband. So we want lower. And Tune it. Okay, you get the idea. Yeah, look and see what is that. Okay. That was fun. You can seek backwards. That dude's cranking. <laughs> Probably a computer. <laughs> Got a wonder. So fun. So you see we're going backwards now. We'll go back up to this band. We'll scan up. Then we'll go do some AM. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll Talk about FM reception too, if I have to do that. <laughs> I'm stuck in there. We're going to do some daytime and nighttime band scans. I'll try to find some ham activity for you guys. You don't know what I'm talking about? So it gets done with that band. Go from here. And then we'll stop 10 megahertz. Quite a few. Uh -huh. Just get an idea of what the radio can do. Here's some news from IRRS in Italy and or Ireland. We were at the latest HFCC meeting in Tunis, January 21st to 25th, where Nexus IBA promoted a very interesting roundtable discussion on the future of shortwave. There is still no good news about DRM receivers, and some shortwave stations are struggling to keep alive. Some may close soon due to the high cost of spare parts and aging transmitters. However, IRRS, Nexus, and European Gospel Radio 
broadcasts from up-to-date facilities, including new high-power energy-efficient continental transmitters from 100 to 300 kilowatts. We have some daily broadcasts to Europe on our mainstream frequency 7290 at 19 to 20 UT, featuring international public access radio and EGR programs, such as on Mondays, The Voice of Love is... Okay, so you get the idea. Cool. Um, I think we could try 10 megahertz. Let's see if we can get it. Execute. Coming in nice and clear on 10. Nice. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and disconnect this. Put our antenna back down. Locks in there really nicely. Uh, this is a great all-around radio. I'm enjoying it. Um, so let's go to the AM band. Okay, so right, so you hit this. It's not intuitive, so you have to, uh, you can just enter in the frequency. So we'll, I'll enter in um, the low 520. I think it's 520. We'll go execute. Okay, so we'll go ahead. We'll just seek, see what it finds. To black students, Trump was blamed. Flynn Arthur. Of so if you tap it once, it goes up 10K. If you tap it once over here, it goes up to 1 kilohertz. And this is nice too, it's still no mute on tuning. It's WMT. So let's see if we can pick up Nashville. <laughs> we save money. Since 1889, we put <laughs> so that's the first time I heard that. Why we still um, WSM Nashville, Tennessee. 650, which is uh, 434 miles. We'll go up to uh, Tricky Stations. So this is 710. This is WOR, New York. New York, pretty hard to get because... Um, so 720 is right next to it, so you can go down. Sounds a little better. And then you can go sync. So I'm trying to lock up. I'm trying to lock up on the upper side band, so we'd have to tune this a little bit to get it to work well. So let's go lower. Oh, so it gives an idea of how that sync works. It works really well. I use it for AM stations quite a bit. Okay, so then if we want, we can go. Let's turn this lock off here. Back to normal on sync, you know, regular mode. Let's go up to Zoomer. Got music playing on CFZM, Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. Give you some ideas. Quite literally an I-75 northbound at bumper to bumper. WSB, Atlanta, Georgia. Six hundred thirty miles. Not bad. CJBC, Toronto, Ontario. And, um, got Louisiana here. WWL, New Orleans. 865 miles. WCBS barely coming through. But it gives you an idea. And of course, my presets, I can go page, like I said, whoops, I'm not scanning. Page one. And then we can pick my presets. Eye exams available by independent doctors of optometry at or next to ProVision and most. I would imagine he would be. I would. 20, 20 coming in as well. 57 in the. Marchie and Greco 7. There you go. Uh, by the way, Those are all Chicago Mike locals. Kennedy. And of course, I got some FM on here. Yeah, I do some exercise in the pool. A couple 
So they show you you can mix it. 1100, high up. KMLX, St. Louis, Missouri. Eleven eighty is WHAM, Rochester, New York. And WPHT, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, seven hundred miles. So dusk is a good time to uh, search these stations. So let's go ahead and turn us off and do final thoughts on the Sony ICF SW seventy six hundred GR. Um, I like this radio. I like it a lot. Get out of the way. Um, yeah, this is a been this is a great radio. I, I this is one of the first radios I grabbed. It's real sensitive on the short wave. It works really well on the medium wave. Long wave, I picked up something that's fantastic. Um, I don't miss airband. I don't think I need to have airband. Um, so I enjoy tuning Hamson with this one. I'm understanding the world clock, how to use it, the tuning aspect of not having a knob, but this works out okay. I'm, I'm actually getting the hang of this and direct entering the frequencies when I need to. Um, very simple page setup. Uh, this is going to be probably one of my go-to radios, I'll be honest with you. I actually prefer this radio over my Texan. I think it sounds better, and my Texan 660, um, I like it, but it, it has vibration, and it has noise issues. Um, and I forgot to mention here, FM, <laughs> FM reception report, um, but the FM selectivity was good, and the FM select, sorry, the FM sensitivity was good with 61 stations found, and the FM selectivity was okay to good. Give you an idea, this FM, this FM on this radio is decent. It's not spectacular. It's similar to my PL660 Texan, just to give you an idea on the FM. I forgot to mention it earlier. I, should, I did at the end of the video, though. I remembered, for those who stayed and waited. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the video presentation of the Sony ICF SW7600GR, please give me a big like. There's going to be more videos to follow. This is one awesome radio. I'm going to feature this in a lot of videos. So just a, an awesome radio to have. Uh, two, if you're new to the channel and you love Sony's, Sony fanboy, just like me, um, or fangirl, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, get notified of future videos. And three, comment below what you think about this radio. Do you own it? Do you love it? Do you own it? Do you not love it? Let me know. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you next episode.